It's so easy for us to recognize talent in other domains across life, but what about video games? How can you tell if you're talented at League, for example? Do you have any hope of climbing at a reasonable pace, or are you doomed to be hard stuck for the rest of your life? Welcome to the second installment of my video series on talent in League of Legends. If you guys missed the debut video of this series, I highly recommend you watch it at some point. I delve into the actual definition of talent while analyzing different aspects of it. It's sort of like the introductory lecture to the rest of the university course. Going forward, I'm going to discuss things assuming you've already watched that video and know the terminology. So, what exactly is a problem when it comes to discerning talent in League of Legends? Now, why the hell is Rabies even bothering to make a whole ass video series about this topic in the first place? My problem is that observing talent in League of Legends can be a bit of a logistical nightmare. The game is so incredibly complex, not to mention that it changes all the fucking time, making it near impossible for someone to pinpoint what exactly makes someone good. Sure, you can point to things like how sharp someone's fundamentals are and call them talented because of it. But my question would be, what makes them so good at the fundamentals in the first place? What kind of natural aptitudes do they have that makes them excel at the fundamentals while you're still struggling to put the basic pieces together? See, if you see a tall ass kid in high school, you can correctly surmise that he'd be quite good at basketball. The raw talent is so obvious to anyone with working eyeballs and two functioning fucking brain cells. Even if he had no technical skill or wasn't really quick on his feet, just the height to keep the ball away from other people, as well as the proximity to the basket, makes him a better prospect than the vast majority of kids his age. This is overt talent and it doesn't really exist in League. You can't just look at someone and tell he's going to be good at League of Legends. Or can you? The other kind of talent is performative talent. This is more common amongst folks. It's basically an obvious display of natural aptitude and skill at something once you get the opportunity to do it. This is like having an ear for music. It's impossible to tell from first glance if you have the talent in any musical endeavor until you pick up an instrument. You need to perform the task to see if you have any sort of aptitude with it. In League, this is obviously reflected in solo queue. Solo queue is where you're allowed to quote unquote perform League of Legends and the ones that have a knack for it distance themselves from their competition quite easily. This doesn't mean that talented folks don't work hard for their rank, but they get more out of their hard work than the rest of us. While you're busting your ass trying to get out of gold and into platinum, they're busting their ass trying to get out of Grandmaster into Challenger. Simply calling it talent is a bit broad and vague, so in this video, let's break down how exactly these talents can manifest in your league journey. Number 1. Mental RAM This is by far the biggest manifestation of talent I've seen in all my years playing the game. Mental RAM is the ability to hold numerous points of information simultaneously and making decisions using all of them in an efficient manner. Are you able to keep track of your CS, enemy laners cooldowns, enemy junglers pathing, enemy supports roam timings, your teammates lane states and what your champion wants to be doing at any given time? Probably not. People with higher mental RAM have the ability to hold more things in their brains at all times, making them vastly superior in pretty much every decision-making opportunity. And since League is basically one giant clusterfuck of decision-making, it's single-handedly one of, if not the most important skill a League player can have, and some people just have it in spades. Now keep in mind that mental RAM can also be trained, just like most of the other talents I'm going to discuss here. However, that doesn't change the fact that some people simply have the propensities to sort out a shit ton of information from the start. Faker is probably the best example of this. I remember when Faker streams first came to Twitch, everyone was mind blown by how much he was moving his camera around the map to check for literally everything. His mental RAM and information processing, which was already godlike when he first started out as a rookie, has been trained over a decade plus career playing top tier league that it was literally dizzying to watch his POV for more than a few minutes. While this is the most extreme version of this talent, you can probably observe it in smaller dosages across your friend groups. Do you guys have a friend that always knows what the next play should be? Are they able to make rapid decisions on the fly simply because of the volume of information they're able to keep track of simultaneously? Often this player is probably the best player in the friend group since this skill is the most valuable skill to have in League of Legends and is often a determinant of success within this game. It's no coincidence that the greatest player of all time is famous for this skill. Number 2. Learning speed. Some people have the ability to pick up the game at a much faster pace than other people, allowing them to easily breeze through plateaus that might have taken you months and months to overcome. We all had that one friend that started like 5 months ago or some shit and now they're almost the same rank as you. League of Legends is immeasurably complex, so what enables these certain individuals to pick up this game so fast? Turns out, certain people have an easier time compartmentalizing the game and breaking it down into smaller intuitive pieces. If League is like one giant ass puzzle, they have an easier time breaking the puzzle down into smaller sections and completing them one at a time. I think the real secret behind this talent is that these people are more competitively inclined. Instead of immersing and exploring a video game, they're pre-wired to optimize it. They naturally gravitate towards efficiency over immersion and this is what makes them have so much competitive success. 
You wouldn't believe how many stories I've heard of pro players that don't even know what some champions do or have zero interest in lore or stuff like that. They aren't inclined towards that kind of content. Their sole focus is on winning the game and thinking up efficient ways to do so. Us regular ass gamers are stopping to smell the flowers while these motherfuckers are grinding away on that one champion, trying to figure out how to complete the puzzle of winning more and more games and climbing elo. Somewhere in their brains, they're able to look past the aesthetics and flourishes and tunnel in on the gameplay instead. Let me give you a league specific example. Let's take Jin for example league's best design champion. If I ask the average league enthusiast about Jin, they'll go into a tirade about how they really like the sniping element of his ult, they like his sick backstory about being a methodical serial killer, and how his kit is perfectly balanced and all that jazz. If I ask the same question to one of these competitively inclined folks, they'll start discussing the champion in terms of their kit, what they like about each ability, what builds are best on them, how the champion feels in a fight. Bear in mind, through mastery, we all eventually get to that second stage. However, there are some people who start off at that second stage and they only go up from there and that's what i'm trying to tell you guys there are some people that are so predisposed to thinking of the game from x's and o's without being slowed down by the fantastical escapist elements of the game like the rest of us the games have many aspects to them that enchant a gamer into a new fantastic universe and this is the imperative behind keeping the gamer hooked and playing this is what makes the gaming company so much money and even leads to addiction for some people but for some people their brains doesn't seem to register that it's really a game they adapt to the universe very quickly and start optimizing like they're actually surviving in real life and that's what makes them so dangerous on the competitive ladder number three mechanical talent now y'all know i was going to cover this eventually i just need to get through the ones that i thought were more important out of the way first mechanical talent or mechanics in general is not nearly as important as people including me in the past thought it was i have a video on this coming soon after i finish this talent series but mechanics is probably the least important part of your climbing in league of legends if i were to make a pie chart mechanics would be the smallest part on that pie However, that doesn't mean it can't be beneficial. Most people are used to mechanical outplays that are all over social media when I say this, but mechanics can be a lot more minute than that. Sure, having a crazy mechanical play where you reverse the tides of a game is much more memorable, but it doesn't happen very often, especially if you're playing in a suitable ranked elo for you. Mechanics, put simply, is hand-eye precision. No matter how good your decision making might be, you still have to click your mouse on the screen to exert your will onto the game. The better and more precise you are, the more clearly your decisions will be imprinted onto the game. I believe everyone can get quite decent at this skill, but some people can have an advantage over others. The biggest advantage is being younger, obviously. When you have young hormones pumping in and out of your bloodstream, you're more aggressive and willing to use your mechanics to escape out of situations, which in turn sharpens your mechanics. It's sort of like a snowball effect. I've noticed that as I get older, I'm simply more calm and measured than I was 10 years ago. And as a result, I don't find myself gravitating towards those blood boiling, high octane mechanical outplay situations as much as I used to. Another advantage has to do with the anatomy of your hands. If you have the hands of a pianist, let's say, long and slender, you'll be easily able to reach across the keyboard to hit your buttons and not be under so much duress when you're keeping your hands in that same position for hours on end. This is also something I struggle with because I have rather blocky fingers and my family's history of arthritis isn't exactly helping here either. The last facet of league talent I like to discuss is retention. Retention is basically how much of your skill can you hold on to after a prolonged break. It can also mean how much you need to play to keep yourself at your current level. People with high retention can get back into the groove of things much quickly after a break. This is a nice quality of life buff that can really come in handy if you couldn't get a game in every day or had to travel on vacation or something. While everyone gets rusty to a certain extent, there are individuals out there who are either more resistant to it or can shake it off quicker than most people. Wonder is a good example of this. While I think most of this comes down to how well you interface with the game, or just games in general, some of it has to do with how well you know the game in its purest form. This again comes back to what we discussed previously in the video, which is your brain's ability to break down the game in simple pieces is very very crucial. If League of Legends is this massive monolith inside your head and it's all complicated and you feel 10 different emotions every time you think about it, you will have a hard time understanding the game in the first place, let alone reintegrating back into it. Rather than overcomplicating this already complex game, these people have systems, either manually or intuitively, that make the game much easier for them to navigate. And while that might not result in a powerful learning stimulus, it might result in the ability to catch up real quick. For those of you who have stuck around for this long, I'm going to give you a fifth bonus manifestation of talent, which is easily the most potent out of all of them, aggression. Aggression is the easiest way to identify if a player is good or not. This is because in order to be aggressive, players need to take much more variables into account and have the mechanical acumen to pull it off compared to if they were just passive little bitches making the easy safe play every time. Passive play 
players simply don't have the mind space to calculate the rapidly progressing game in real time and continue to play on the knife's edge. Over all the league podcasts I've watched, reputable coaches and scouts like Peter Dunn and Yamato Cannon always reference to a player's aggression when it comes to shorthands for knowing if someone's going to be good or not. Aggression is a byproduct of mental RAM and mechanics. It's a combination of both guys. If you play aggressive just because you think being aggressive makes you good, then you're just an idiot. The ability to constantly refresh your mental feed on what's happening and always position your champion to get the most out of every scenario makes you a devastating threat. The simple act of constantly playing on the edge reinforces a player's ability to navigate that situation better. And eventually, aggressive players snowball to a point where they can consistently turn subpar scenarios into winning game states. One thing to note through all of this is that these talents can differ in how intensely they might manifest in someone. Faker can manifest god levels ranges of mental RAM, but your high elo friend can only do about 25% of what he can. It's important to acknowledge that while someone can exhibit any of these talents, it's probably to a mediocre degree, otherwise they'll just become like pro players or something. Just because you or someone that you know might exhibit one or maybe even all of these characteristics, it's not necessarily an automatic determinant to success. Sure, their talents might get them to Emerald or Diamond or maybe even Master all by itself, but then it sort of caps out and it's sort of on the person to invest time and effort into making it even further. Their talents easily give them a leg up or simply expedite the process. So what do you do if you don't have any of these talents? Are you just fucked from the jump? Well, yeah, but also no. If you don't have any of these qualities, don't worry. This whole channel is built off the fact that me, someone who not only doesn't have any of these talents, but also someone whose brain seems to be actively stopping me from getting better at the game, was able to make the long and arduous climb from bronze to diamond. If I was talented, it would have taken me like two years. If I was an average gamer, it would have taken me like seven years, but it took me nine fucking years. That's why y'all should be lapping up everything I teach on this channel. If it worked for such a backward, disadvantaged gamer like me, it'll definitely do wonders for you in your climb. So far in this video series, we've discussed what actually talent is and how it manifests in your league climb. In the next and final video of this series, we'll tackle how exactly you should be climbing if you're not a talented gamer in the first place. If you want to stay posted on that, make sure to subscribe to the channel. For your next video, I recommend watching this first installment of the series if you haven't already. If you've already watched it, I recommend watching my video on what the rank ladder is actually testing. It's sort of like a prologue to the final video of the series. Thanks for watching guys, and remember, anyone can get diamonds.